Hi everyone, this is Lindsay from The Culture Project and I'm here with the beautiful and the incredible Lila Rose of Live Action here at Seek 2019. Lila, thanks so much for taking the time sitting down with us. The Oprah, the new Oprah. Oh, shoot. A um, couple questions for you. I know that so many of us in the Culture Project, so many young people here at SEEK and across the country really just look up to you as a force for good and beauty in the world. And I think really look up to you and emula want to emulate you and your witness. And um, my, qu my first question is just, what would you say to encourage young people to share the message of human dignity in the world today? Well, first of all, I think Culture Project's doing a beautiful job of that. So you guys inspire me. Thank you for that. And I think you just be fearless about what you know to be true in your heart because of what you've learned through our Lord and His church and that you have something to give the world that is so beautiful. And if you face opposition, know that Jesus was opposed. You know, Jesus was persecuted and He promised that if you try to be a disciple of Christ, you too will be persecuted. And so don't be afraid to say the unpopular thing if it is the truth and do it with love, but don't be afraid to speak it out, speak it up, speak out about it, whether it's about sex or identity or love, like what Culture Project teaches about. And God will give you so much peace and joy in the process if you're doing it because you're doing it out of love for Christ and doing it through his church, through the teachings of his church. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, such a good reminder. And I think too, I think that can stop us so often is the opposition. We're afraid of what could happen. I mean, we, we come to conferences like this and we're around like-minded people and we can be so certain and then the opposition and it can be so easy to cower. And my, uh, I'm just wondering how you personally face the opposition, what you do in your own life, because I know you speak in the public sphere about a lot of these things. So how do you um, face the opposition? Well, I think a few practical things that can help people. Is first of all, making time to pray every day, even if it's just 10 minutes, like setting a timer just to take time. It's not prayer is about thinking with God as much as it is thanking God, talking about life with God. And you get to know yourself better. You understand your own heart better, your own fears. So take the time to really meditate with God and, to, and towards God, to God, um, and then get help. I would encourage people to not do this alone because if you're like alone and you're feeling you're the only one who thinks, who believes what you believe and you're not supported, it's going to be much harder to share the gospel or the teachings of the church. But if you have a community, at least one Catholic friend who's in your corner, you can commiserate with, you can be accountable to and be like, hey, my goal is to share the gospel once this week or my goal I have this professor who's you know really bashing you know or promoting what I know to be false about sex in mm -hmm. the classroom and I yeah. I feel like I should raise my hand and ask a question like mm -hmm. discuss that with a friend that can encourage you mm -hmm. and also maybe get a spiritual director that can help guide you to become closer to God and more courageous in your faith mm -hmm. um, and then the last thing I would say is to learn more about your faith because I think one of the reasons we often don't share is because we're not confident. So if we learn how to ex t share the teachings of the church, especially on the controversial things like sex or abortion or marriage, but if we know why we believe what we believe and we are able to share it and we can practice that with friends, um, then it's much easier to share. I think a lot of the fear comes from it or, you know, inside of us, like we're going to screw up or mm -hmm. we're going to look weird. But if we know it's true, mm -hmm. we, we practice saying it, we can share it and we do it with love to really encounter the other person. I think that's the, some first steps to set you up for more success than failure. Great. I love all of the little practicals because that creates the habits and the character to be the bold and courageous witness out there. And, um, and it takes time. Right. And, right. and you'll make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Like you're not going to be a perfect communicator or, mm -hmm. you know, you might have a tough conversation or a friend might be like, okay, like that was a little too much. And you'd be like, I'm sorry, I don't want to like sure. pressure you or harm you with this, mm -hmm. but I want to share this because I love you. And mm -hmm. so I think, you know, just trying and being willing to fail is part of the mm -hmm. path of a disciple. Mm -hmm. Excellent. What do you think um, the role of sexual integrity and the virtue of chastity, um, how does that come into play of creating a culture where we really see the value of every human life and every person? 
Wow, this is just the culture project like pitch right. set up, right? <laughs> That's great. I was like, now we watch a culture project presentation by Lindsay. <laughs> That's great. Well, you guys have it down. I mean, it's it's all about a, a yes. You know, it's all about self gift. It's about um, it's about love, but it's about seeing the other as somebody that you want the good for, instead of seeing the other as an object to be used or as just a path to get to where you want to go, whether it's friendship or romantic relationship or even business. Like the other person is not just a stepping stone to your desire. The other person is in and of themselves holy and precious mm -hmm. and deserving of honor and love and so it's like how can I be sacrificial in my love towards this person instead of trying to get mm -hmm. that's the heart of the chastity teaching yeah. and so how we approach sex is the same way like sex is about first of all the other like it's about what is lifelong my commitment to you do I love you with my whole heart will I give myself to you lifelong in marriage and it's about saying yes to what sex can entail which is life mm -hmm. And today it's like, well, contraception is a responsible thing to do. Right. No, contraception is the selfish thing to do. Contraception is the thing to do because you're like, you're fearful or you're, you're, you don't understand how good and the beauty of the procreation within sex. Um, you know, some people maybe don't have selfish motives. They have fearful motives or other, other motives. But I think it's about really understanding what these things mean and then seeing the other and the beauty of the other and the gift, the beauty that is the gift of life. Great, thank you. Culture Project answer, but beautifully Lila Rose answer as well. Um, another question, another thought that I have is um, the role of beauty. And it, I, I do think that live action does that well too. And also, and just how that leads to the, the, the truth. And um, it's so undeniable when you see it, but, but how do you think beauty plays a role in that in capturing people's hearts who might be maybe a, like a, object to truth in certain ways. Right, right. Well, I mean, Dostoevsky says mm -hmm. beauty will save the world. Mm -hmm. And it's because beauty, if it's real beauty, it encapsulates goodness and truth. Mm -hmm. Goodness, truth and beauty are, are one. Mm -hmm. And you can have something that appears beautiful, but because it's not good or true, it's actually not the fullness of beauty. So it's not going to really inspire goodness mm -hmm. or truth. Mm -hmm. So the, you need the three together. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I agree. I think as Catholics, like, first of all, the church has some of the greatest art, the greatest musicians, you know, the greatest philosophy, the greatest literature of all time. And I think we need to just really encourage art, literature, beauty that comes from a place of the fullness of truth of the human person and who God is. And that's going to be the most inspiring and beautiful art. So I'm excited when I like meet Catholic artists who are like, you know, yes, they're making religious art, but they're also just making art in general, and they're just valuing the, the artistry of art, and they're doing it because they understand the way the world is and how beautiful the world is. So, yeah. Great. Are, any artists, artist, artistry is so important, whatever it is, whether it's design or architecture or painting or music or it's dance, it's all really, really important, and you're worshiping God in that. So do it and you know do it with joy and do it do it wholeheartedly. Beautiful. And I think um, something I remember about your story is that I think when you were around 15, you encountered a, a photo of an abortion and um, that kind of set you on the trajectory that you are on today and, and really like shocked you to expose what was really happening and um, this desire to defend the pre-born. And um, so I saw that in your story as kind of the impetus, what got you started, but what keeps you going after years of this work? What keeps you encouraged? What keeps you motivated? Um, and what keeps you going in this in this fight? Well, I think it has to be our faith because it's so heavy. I mean, abortion, you have 3,000 lives being killed brutally every day, all the cost to women and men and families. And so, first of all, it's like bringing on other people to share the burden to get the work going because it's like I can't do it alone. Like I have an amazing team and growing that team and growing the pro-life movement. Um, we're in this together. The church is or on this. And it has to come from a place of community and health and joy because if it doesn't come from that, then it, we will not be a winsome voice in the world. We're not really going to end abortion if we don't also promote the beauty of life. And we can't do that if we're not living beautiful lives. So it's really like about how we live our lives. And I'm not living my life in order to end abortion, although that's one of my goals. I'm living my life because I 
I, I'm a child of God and he created me for eternity and for love. Abortion is a horrific evil that is the result of sin. And so I want to see it ended like I want to see all sin ended. And it's a special human rights abuse that's, I believe, the worst. But the purpose of life is not just to defeat evil, you know, but it's to, to, to pursue the good and ultimately to get to heaven. Yeah. <laughs> so, Amen. Yeah. so Amen. if we focus on that, I think everything else falls into place and the joy and the peace come. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. Well, this has been so great. Thank you so much, Lila. Something that you said, the G.K. Chesterton quote, beauty will save the world and beauty will save the culture. And thank you so much for your witness in that. Thank you so much for your time.